everybody, you are listening to the History Boys. As usual, I am Christopher Whedon, and I uh, told my parents that I was a History Boy, and uh, nice that, that 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 relationship's over. So <laughs> it um, didn't go well. No, they were like, <laughs> they're like, we listen every episode. We didn't know that was you. <laughs> now that they're we like, know, that, that guy is you. No. <laughs> I did a hand gesture like a yeah, like cut it off, you know. Yeah, off, you know yeah, like, yeah. Shut it down. Yeah, cut shut it down. It out. Yeah. I'm Tyler. Um, you know, uh, Tyler Armantrout, history history boy. Been doing a lot of doing a lot of thinking lately. Uh, thinking about um, Arby's, um, the stars, a star made out of Arby's. Mm. Starbies. Starbies. I thought Chris meant. Like celebrities, that is like what I meant. stars. Yeah, yeah. We're thinking a lot I'm, about celebrities. I'm talking about. I'm talking George about Clooney. a forty foot, forty foot tall statue of Harrison Ford made out of roast beef. <laughs> I'd eat it. Oh okay. yeah. Uh, that is display only. only. <laughs> For a reason. That is, yeah, that is orange glue. <laughs> Unlike the orange glue that's behind the counter that we put on the sandwiches. <laughs> yep. Uh, I am uh, everyone's favorite heartbreaker and seat taker, Zach Mech, and I'm uh, a history boy. My seat! I just, yeah, stealing seats my and heart. breaking hearts. Mm-hmm. Nice. My cat does both those things. <laughs> what I'm saying is that I'm, t- I'm actually Chris's cat. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen uh, him in the same place. Never yeah. seen him in the same place. That's not true. I. I <laughs> have, <laughs> it just uh, surprises me to learn this new information. <laughs> I mean, we I'm we are uh, uh, edutainment, so yeah. there's a little knowledge for you. I just dropped. There you go. <laughs> and I am Jerry Nash, your humble history boy, as always. Thank you so much for joining us again, folks, dear listener, and fellow history boys. We mm. made it. We made yeah. it to part five cool. the, the, of Wyatt Earp's Wild West. Finally. Yeah. I know, it's I been quite to, quite the epic. Yeah. I, I need to kick the dust off my my spurs and um, <laughs> put some aloe vera on my butt crack because I've been I've been riding riding for a week straight. <laughs> I, I, I just like that we spent all Black History Month celebrating uh, <laughs> white heroicism. Yes. That is due to my just poor planning. Uh, <laughs> and now we're going to go into Women's History Month and nearly ignore that as well. Uh, yeah, yep. Because I just have poor planning on the research end of it. That is mm-hmm. all on me. Yeah. Maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Maybe next year we'll respect women, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You know what I mean. I do. Last we left you, Wyatt Earp had killed some of the men responsible for his brother Morgan's death. Mm-hmm. Not all of them, but definitely a few responsible. Uh, Baker's dozen. <laughs> I was just going to ask, uh, just to clarify, this is after they, they got the hell out of Dodge. That's after Bat also got the hell out of Dodge, right? Right? They were Dodge yeah. anymore. <laughs> it's post Dodge world now. Yeah, it, it, every, everything got gentrified, and they were just trying to find the cool new hip spot to go to. Yeah, uh, not far off, not far off. And maybe he had a badge, you know. Maybe he had the legal authority to do this, but maybe he didn't. You know what I mean? It was unclear then. It's unclear now. You know what I mean? People argue over whether or not he's a good guy because he did that. You know what I mean? They could never actually return to Arizona because they all still had warrants on their head for the murder of Frank Stilwell. Yeah. We could never go back to They're Arizona. Ne- yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're both, yeah. That's from Frisky Dingo. It's a Frisky yeah. Dingo reference. If you got it for the viewers at home, if you it, look it up, it's not <laughs> funny cartoon from the early 2000s. Yeah. Now, the Earp Vendetta Posse split up. Wyatt and Maddie, basically, when when he moved Maddie to California to, like, live with his parents, she, like, wrote him and was like, hey, when are you gonna, like, come back? I'm just here sitting with your parents. When are you gonna come get me? <laughs> and uh, he was like, I'll be back. And then just never showed up. Nice. Uh, instead, <laughs> he went to San Francisco met up with uh, 
Sarah Josephine Marcus, who had cut ties with Johnny Bean, and uh, they got together. And they would be together for the rest of their lives cool. um, from then. But, but the thing about Maddie is once that happened, she got, like, really depressed, and she went back to Arizona. She returned to prostitution. She sank further in her into her laudanum addiction. Mm. She eventually committed suicide wow. with, with an overdose of laudanum and was quoted as saying, Wyatt Earp ruined my life. <laughs> I, pretty... mean, I, th- I thought she was quoted as saying, Boy, oh boy, was I thirsty. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She was uh, buried in the in a lot in this ghost town it's, it's like kind of you, you can't find it now like <laughs> the specials they, they've, playing in the background <laughs> they've made a like a little monument there that people can go visit but uh they don't know where exactly where she's buried but a lot of people thought like how can Wyatt Earp be a hero at all now that we found out that Maddie Blaylock like got really depressed and killed herself yeah. because you he know he was all 13 of her reasons Jesus, dude. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> wow. Oh, lordy. He's like, I don't understand why she got so sad. I left her with my parents. My parents are cool. They're like me, but older. <laughs> Mom, Dad, you killed another one of my girlfriends. Way to go. <laughs> Jesus. Turns out his parents were like George Costanza's parents. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Surrender Virginia. now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wear a different shirt. But uh, one thing that the uh, Vendetta ride did accomplish was it kind of sent the cowboys scattering. You know, mm-hmm. the ones that fled. You know, some of them faded into obscurity. Some of them were gunned down. You know, in sort of des- desperate attempts. You know, they were they were gunned down or arrested and thrown in jail for, like for the rest of their lives. And it, it really took, like, the the wind out of their sails, you know? Like, the Cowboy Confederation was pretty much broken. Well, right afterwards, Chet Arthur gave, like, access to the military to deal with the Cowboys. And they said, well, maybe it's, maybe it's the military's involvement. And a lot of people still point to the Vendetta Ride and, and the Earps, mm-hmm. actually. Mm. Two, two questions. Chester A. Arthur kind of, kind of sicked the military on the whole thing. And like shut it down in a very like uh, end of pirates style move, mm, like, kind of yeah. Um, and also, I hope lots of people called him Chet, and I, <laughs> I I hope like in the Oval Office he's like, guys, you know what I think? I think we need to like do something about all these cowboy outlaws. Hold on, because <laughs> they're like harsh and my mellow. They're like, you're right, you're right, Mr. President. Dude, Mr. President was my dad. Call me Chet. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a laid back guy, you know? Yeah. If, yeah. if you want to know more about Chet Arthur, we, we did a whole episode about him. Uh, go back and listen to that. Or if you want to know more about Chester A. Arthur, watch my one man show on YouTube live streaming. Chet, exclamation point, mm-hmm. where I do his entire presidency in that voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's all song, uh, too. Ike Clanton, um, he eventually found a violent death um, mm. in a completely unrelated matter, uh, but he was eventually shot off his horse. Mm. And uh, that's how he met his death, uh, like a lot of these cowboys would. Yeah, it seems that uh, fading into obscurity is kind of the best option for them. <laughs> yeah. Got to keep the horse moving, man. Got to keep the horse moving. <laughs> just got to keep on. It's, it's about micro spurring. Is a term that I just made up where you move your ankles really quick and you're constantly just tap, tap, tapping the horse to keep it moving. And that way they're always trying to aim for a moving target. No one can hit you. Really hummingbird. Yeah. Have, have really, you ever ridden a horse, yeah. Tyler? In real life? Yeah, in real life. <laughs> what a I mean, I've ridden a horse in like Legend of Zelda, Shadow of the Colossus, Red Dead Redemption. Those Gun, don't count. If you remember, if you're mm-hmm. into uh, the classics. Um, which games do count then? Yeah, which games do. Which horses in video games count as riding a real horse, Jerry? <laughs> 
Red Dead may be the most, and it's pretty far off. <laughs> <laughs> now, on July 14th, 1882, Johnny Ringo was found dead in a low fork mm. of a large tree in West Turkey Creek Valley near Chiricahua Peak in Arizona Territory. Mm -hmm. um, he had a bullet in the right temple, and a revolver was in his lap, like in his hand, in his lap. Mm -hmm. And people of the time were like, well, he killed himself, you know. But, like, his boots were off, his, like, pants were kind of down, he was shot straight through. There was a lot of, like, weird things that didn't add up. Honestly, it's kind of a story for a different day. There's a lot of theories. There's a lot of things that don't make any sense about it. But Bob like, Kilmer killed him. Yeah. In, in the movie, Doc Holliday kills him uh, because they have that fight, you know, and it's it's a good payoff. Um, but Doc had court, uh, which we'll get to here in a second, uh, where he couldn't have possibly made it. You know what I mean? Wyatt even once claimed that he killed Johnny Ringo. Uh, but the thing is, is that, like, he was sort of mistaken on everybody he killed in the, like fight with curly bill like one guy he said he killed like that i even said why it killed in the last episode he turned up later like he died in texas like as an old man like why it claimed that he killed a lot of people because i think he was unsure of exactly how many people he killed he's like <laughs> i saw know? people on horses and i shot at them I mean, <laughs> maybe one was johnny ringo i don't know right he took aim and waited for him to stop micro spurring and took his shot. And the guy fell off the horse. He he assumed it was one guy. Maybe it was another guy. I'd like to think that like sometimes they're like, "Hey, remember? I don't know Springfield, clickety clack Jack or whatever." <laughs> White Earp was like, "I killed him," and he's like, uh, "Wrong again, White Earp, because I'm right here." Oh no! Yeah. And he's like, "Ah, oh, you got me again." It's yeah. like Henry Lee Lucas. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> uh, in, in that everyone. sense. <laughs> I killed everyone. It wasn't Wyatt, and it certainly wasn't Doc. The timelines don't make sense. A lot of people in Arizona today, if you were to ask them today, think it's a man named Buckskin Frank Leslie. Oh, uh, for sure. Yeah, they were drinking the night before. Again, story for a different day. It's a whole thing. To this day, I just want you to know that the uh, suicide notion, you know, a uh, uh, coroner's report is still very much uh, looked at skeptically, you know, mm -hmm. by a lot of people. Even though I guess there's more evidence to point to suicide than anyone else, uh, anywhere else. Should we put a disclaimer on this episode for the amount of suicide that's in it? <laughs> there's one. <laughs> well, two, I guess. Two. <laughs> So far, Doc kind of bounced around Colorado. He went to Denver. He went to Leadville. Uh, Leadville wasn't good for his condition. Uh, mm. The air in Leadville was terrible, and he got way worse in Leadville. Yeah. 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 But he was actually arrested. Like, a guy, or this dude came out of nowhere and arrested him. And he claimed to be, like, from Johnny Bean. And he was going to pick up that $500 reward and bring in Doc Holliday back into Arizona. They are going to extradite him, right? And it turns out that, like, Johnny Bean's like, there's a $500 reward for Doc Holliday. And this guy took it as, like, I'm a deputy. And, like, <laughs> rode out. And it's like, yeah, we just wired Johnny Bean. Uh, he has no idea who the fuck you are. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> but he was, like, gonna get the 500. Turns out, like, the guy was, like, a con man. He was a total crank. But, like, now, like, the state of Colorado was put into a weird position. Like, do we actually have to extradite Doc Holliday? You know? Mm -hmm. And Wyatt heard of this. They had sort of made amends. Like, they met up again and sort of made amends. And he heard about this, and he couldn't do anything about it, because then he could get arrested and they could extradite him. So he asked Bat Masterson if he could help Doc out. And as a favor to Wyatt, Bat helped Doc. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. And the way he helped him was genius. It's underhanded, and it's something that introduced a new word into the legal lexicon which mm -hmm. is called holidaying, yeah. right? And so what, what Bat did is he drew up these, these warrants 
and he went went down to where you know he was being held, and he goes, "Hey, I I have a warrant for Doc Holliday right here. He was a bunco man. He's under arrest. He's in, in the state of Colorado because the law is, is if someone is in your state that that has been arrested, and there is an existing warrant out for them in that state, then they can't be extradited. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is so uh, at the time, right? So so what happens is is you know those the, the guys found out to be a total fucking crank they kind of forget about extraditing the the bunko charges get thrown out and he walks free <laughs> you know? it's like a weird legal play yeah <laughs> i never get off on a technicality yeah, yeah. You, that's exactly you, what happened to him cuz when you get when you get off on a technicality that's how you become a freddy cougar Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. Right. He got a technicality, and then he murdered all those kids. Yeah. I mean, yeah. granted, he murdered some kids before the technicality, but I think that those are unrelated. Yeah. Just unrelated <laughs> kid child murder. I mean, I he did kill them in their dreams, just like Doc Holliday would do. <laughs> yeah. And obviously the soundtrack was uh, the song Holiday. Yes, yeah. of course. Celebrate. <laughs> If yeah, we're getting so it would chased be so nice. to celebrate. Well, children are getting chased through a boiler room, and there's like a goat yelling at them, and Doc Holliday's mm. ambling. He's like, I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with this like raspy voice. Exactly. <laughs> Holiday. <laughs> uh, so Doc actually kind of did keep quiet, though. He still got into trouble, of course, because he drank a lot. Uh, it's his signature but, style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing was in Leadville, like he met up with the Slopers again, like Johnny mm. Tyler and the Slopers. And the thing was, is that Johnny Doc's... Tyler and the Slopers. <laughs> That's a good rockabilly <laughs> band name. Yep. Yeah, it is actually. <laughs> or like a like a like a rock country, like all out like Rev country. Reverend uh, Horton Heat kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. it's a psychobilly freakout. <laughs> yeah, his his condition had deteriorated. To where they just kind of pushed him around because they knew he was shambling around, you know what I mean? And he knew it, and it really pissed him off that he couldn't really do anything about it. And, like, they sent over this one guy, Billy Allen, and basically for the express purpose to loan Doc five bucks, because Doc couldn't pay it back. He was, like, down to his last buck, you know? And when he couldn't pay it back, like, the dude walked around town, like, like I Clanton being like, oh, I'm gonna find that Doc Holiday, and he sat in his room for like a couple of days, and the guy kept doing it. And he finally went out, and he's like, he like told the cops like, you better protect me. This guy straight up says he's gonna kill me, and like went into this bar, and the dude's coming down the street, and like the cops are like, hey dude, don't go in there. There's trouble in there, and he just brushes past him. <laughs> Doc thinks he's armed. He's coming to kill him. He pulls out a gun immediately as he sees him come through the bar door and shoots at him. Cool. The first shot misses, but the guy like runs away and he Whoa. shoots him again. <laughs> and he gets arrested. He 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 gets off on a on a self uh, defense case, a stand your ground law actually. I hope the second bullet hit the guy as he was running away in the butt and he jumped and grabbed his butt like whoa 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, hit him in very, the shoulder. Very Tom and Jerry style. Yeah. 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 Me meanwhile, Holiday's like, you think I'm mean now? Wait till I get my dream powers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just I just like that it can be considered self-defense. He was just walking in the room. I didn't know if he had a gun or not, you know? Yeah, well, he, like, he had said he was going to kill him. So, like, know. he thought he had a gun. So yeah, that's why that's he fair. should... He, like, the cops were like, I didn't think you were going to shoot him. And he was like, well, then you got to protect me then. And, like, just <laughs> handed over his gun. Uh, Neither did I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, home is where the heart's at, and clearly the, uh, his heart was at a bar. Yeah. So it's oh, kind of yeah. kind of oh, yeah. like the, the, the castle law. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, my house, <laughs> and by which I mean a bar that I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Now, he gambled, he dealt faro, he tended bar, but he went, you know, just kind of around Leadville and uh, Denver are the two kind of places he went to. He went to a couple others, but those were, were the mainstays. 
Because there was like horse racing in Denver. Because the man in charge in Denver at this time was Soapy Smith. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. The clean boy. It was a good yeah. place in Denver for the sporting man. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And Doc was definitely one of them. And I'm sure he was aware of Soapy, and Soapy was aware of him. Because Bat owned a place in Denver during the Soapy Smith years. And there was one place that uh, Soapy didn't fuck with. And that was Bat's. <laughs> you didn't fuck with that place uh, because Bat owned it, you know. They, they became friends afterwards and tried to rig an election. But that's, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Uh, but when Doc, Doc was kind of bouncing around, he heard that Wyatt and Josie were in, in Denver. Uh, Josephine, she liked being called Josie and not Sadie. He heard that they were in Denver. It's harder to rhyme with Grossy. And that's the reason why. You can't say Sadie Grossy. You can say Josie Grossy. She and, liked uh, Josie, Josie more. Yeah, she liked well, Josie. That's because she, she's like I'm Grossy Josie. <laughs> she no. She she was like, don't call me Sadie. You can't rhyme it with Grossy. <laughs> So he's just stressing everyone out how like yeah. she was just down with being gross. Yeah, just always food all over her face, you know, just open bleeding on the grass. Yeah, God. It, it would explain that group of cats just following her. Mm. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Meowing into the night. Uh, jo Josie and the Pussycats. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought I thought she smelled like garbage, and the cats were like. Meow. Both. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why she had a group of, of, of pussy cats all around her. So you gotta, yeah. you gotta, you gotta huff glue and eat cat food. Right. Yeah. It's uh, the only way to sleep. Throw that cat meow. That's true. <laughs> that's an always sunny uh, was, reference. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. Is that I just use their one? jokes on our show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not using them. Uh, the, he heard that Wyatt was in town. And he wanted to visit him because he knew it was probably going to be the last time. The way Josie described Doc was that he had gray hair, like mm -hmm. premature gray hair. He was skeletal, mm -hmm. and he stood on unsteady legs. Mr. And President. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, He's like, oh man, I'm living that skeleton life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That line uh, came from a dream I had, and it's the first time I thought something was funny in a dream, and then woke <laughs> up and still thought it was funny. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Nobody wants to hear about the fucking dream. That's, that's we great. need to throw that on a t-shirt. That's great. <laughs> living that ske Like, in a bad way. Like, oh, man, I'm living that skeleton that's life. <laughs> <laughs> Wyatt and Doc had a sort of tearful goodbye and they both mm -hmm. kind of like walked away from each other quickly because yeah cry babies <laughs> it was an emotional moment chris i have never missed a man in my life <laughs> hey i know almost exactly <laughs> what he's going through in I this know. <laughs> now doc did go to new orleans uh mm -hmm. to meet with his father and they made amends and his father was like holy shit, like, he looked like fucking death, you know, yeah. and he's like, stay here, you know, stay here, and he's like, nah, I'm going back out west, yeah. and he's like, okay, you know. His, his dad was like, oh, Zyda, cool, I got us a good old gumbo going on and some crawdads, you gotta stay over here, boy. Well, and, his uh, <laughs> father was he, from <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> but, I he, thought he, Zach was doing Tom Waits because you said going out west. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tom Waits, yeah. Nola, same shit at that point in time. Yeah. It's really it, the, the the only thing that 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 shifted my suspicion away from that was when you said gumbo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Tom Waits might like I, a I don't gumbo. speak French Creole. I'm sorry. I bet he does. <laughs> Who does? French Creoles. <laughs> They're a myth like the sinking of the Titanic. Yeah. yeah. Doc You're Holliday's guessing half the time. <laughs> Doc Holliday's father was yeah, he was from Georgia. There there was like a conference there, a Confederate conference. It was like a Confederate reunion that was happening. Mm. And that's why Doc went down. Uh, oh, regular New Losers Club. Yeah. yeah. He, was, uh, <laughs> he was working at the OAN booth. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> So this time he didn't go back to Leadville, though. Uh, he went to a place called Glenwood Springs in Colorado. Had a hot springs there. Uh, it sounds it a last... lot nicer than Leadville. Yes, it yeah. does, doesn't it? Leadville sounds like a town from Fallout. Yeah. <laughs> or that, like, really dirty town in, in Red Dead, you know? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was sort of a last-ditch effort for these hot springs to sort of help him or extend his life, you know? And the crazy part about it is, like, you kind of think of Doc, like, in this hospital bed for months on end. Um, that's not the truth. Uh, mm-hmm. He kind of worked every day until he died as a faro dealer, as a bartender, you know. He sh- shambled around. I mean, he was like a walking skeleton and working, mm-hmm. you know. That like that skeleton lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> and he, uh, Do you think he saw other people... That were like right on the edge of dying of tuberculosis, and they would just nod at each other, like, yeah. "Hello, fellow skeleton." <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. They most of the time they would make friends too. They're like, "Oh, yeah. you know what it's like, you know." My fellow ghoul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a lot of ways. Looks like uh, not a lot of people are working at the bar tonight. Just the skeleton crew. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Clack 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 clack. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Dale just died. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, on the pile. Well, at work one day. <laughs> the bone pile. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. At work one day, he had a coughing fit that uh, hospitalized him, right? He had to go back to the hospital bed. It left him bed bound. He would slip in and out of a coma. He was uh, sort of the gambler to the end. <laughs> His cynical point of view was uh, to hedge his bets with uh, which religion he was going to go with. So, like, he talked with both, like, the Catholic and the Protestant, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, people. And even, like, said, like, may as well, like, hedge my bets on this. (laughs) (laughs) I could use all the help I could get is the way to look (laughs) at it. Yeah, retained that sort of sense of humor of, you know... He thought it was funny, too. Anyway, uh, he died on the morning of November 8th, 1887, at the age of 36. Uh, He died among strangers. Um, A lot of people thought that maybe Kate Elder came up and maybe helped him during his last days. Uh, That's not true. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of people record his last words. Uh, there weren't really, there wasn't really anyone there to record his last words. Uh, the legend says that you know he looks down at his feet. And there's no boots on it, and he says, "This is funny," because he thought he would die with his boots on, mm-hmm. and here he is, you know, not dying, dying a violent death, you know. Right. Yeah. He was like either the gra- drapes go or I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think that's Oscar Wilde, right? Yeah, Oscar yeah. Wilde. Yeah, that's pretty good. It was just sort of in, in, in obscurity. Now, Dr. John Henry Doc Holliday is buried in Linwood Cemetery overlooking Glenwood Springs. Or is he? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, no one agrees. His skeleton magic. His yeah. skeleton walks to this day. Yeah. Is, is he back in Griffin, Georgia with his dad in an unmarked mm-hmm. Confederate grave? Could be. Could be. Uh, uh, some say his father brought back... The He's remains. lived as a skeleton ever since then, and now is currently the president of the United States. Jesus Christ. <laughs> My fellow Americans. See, I thought that he was, uh, he was in L.A., and he uh, filmed a bunch of uh, uh, short vignettes for primetime TV of the spooky nature as the Crypt, crypt Keeper. Ah, uh, yes. yes. Yep. But, uh, uh, I nope. thought that the Crypt Keeper was a Jim Henson style <laughs> creation, but it makes more sense that it was Doc Holliday. That does make more sense. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Logic tracks better. I mean, he, he does call everyone kitties. Hello, my yeah. kitties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when he was younger and healthier, everyone was like, why does he keep on calling us boils and ghouls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so who knows where he's actually buried. There's markers. Uh, there's one grave in uh, in in Griffin. Georgia, people think that it's in the Confederate area, maybe with his father. I don't know, but it's it's pretty interesting. But I'll, I'll leave uh, a quote from Wyatt on Doc. Uh, this is, yeah, Wyatt on Doc. Quote, I found him a loyal friend and good company. He was a dentist 
whom necessity had made a gambler, a gentleman whom disease had made a vagabond, a philosopher whom life had made a caustic wit, a long, lean, blonde fellow, nearly dead with consumption, and at the same time the most skillful gambler and nerviest, speediest, deadliest man with a six-gun I ever knew. Mm. End quote. How romantic. Yeah. Right? Bit of a puff piece, but... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a... Uh, uh, yeah, you're you're nice to your friends after they're they're dead, of course. You know? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it sounds like they had an abusive uh, romantic relationship, and you know, <laughs> once one leaves, you know, uh, yeah. To to, to quote uh, Cinderella, you don't know what you got till it's gone. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> you know, some people say that Doc Holliday was abducted by aliens. I think he went home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you say that, Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> and other people, other people say it too. On the I'll internet, <laughs> on the internet, online. He went home to Skeleton Planet. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm really uh... <laughs> the planet Bone Rattler. <laughs> you better believe uh, they're living that skeleton life there. <laughs> That's my new catchphrase. <laughs> You better believe they're living that skeleton life over there. You eat the bones and you leave the flesh on planet Skeleton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. So let's catch up with the Earps real quick. I'm just going to tell you uh, real quick how all the Earps end up. Mm-hmm. So Virginia Wyatt's mom, uh, she died on January 14th, 1893. Uh, in San Bernardino, California. Uh, she was... It left kind of a hole in Nick's uh, Nick Earp's life. Uh, he married a much younger woman. He was 80. She was 50. <laughs> Not that mm-hmm. it really matters at that age. Or any consenting adults, really. Uh, but Nick Earp actually died at the old soldier's home in Sawtell, California. That's because he was an old soldier. Yeah, yeah, and when you're, like, poor and whatnot, that's where you go. He learned some things about himself late in life, and the old soldier's home is actually uh, the name of a gay bar. Mm. Uh, (laughs) I'm into that. Yeah, he died on February 2nd, 1907, shortly after he was actually elected to the Los Angeles County Court, Mm. (laughs) which is super weird. That is. Uh, he's actually buried in West Los Angeles at the Ooh. Los Angeles National Cemetery, where a lot of veterans are buried. Mm-hmm. Uh, he outlived six of his children, which is crazy. Yeah. Wow. Considering uh, he had 42 about... children. <laughs> 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 he definitely had a lot of kids. Uh, now, Newton, the oldest of the boys, he actually had a quiet life. He was a carpenter, and he built uh, houses in Northern California. Much like the Lord. Um, (laughs) And uh, in uh, Nevada as well. But he actually died at the ripe old age in 91 in Sacramento, California. on December Lee years. Yeah, 1928. You might Uh, say he was living that skeleton life. (laughs) (laughs) Then the audience is like, woo! Yeah. 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 Now, James, who spent a lot of his life with Wyatt, him and Wyatt were very close. Even after the Vendetta ride, James lived with Wyatt for a short time in Shoshone County, Idaho, uh, northern Idaho, and helped, you know, run saloons and shit with Wyatt, because that's what they did. They ran saloons and shit. But uh, he eventually settled permanently by 1890 in California, uh, where he actually died of natural causes in San Bernardino. I thought you meant... By settling permanently, that he died. <laughs> he settled permanently, <laughs> then died. Yes, That's settled like permanently, retirement. and then years later he died. Uh, he yeah, he died on. Uh, <laughs> 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 he uh, he died on January twenty fifth, nineteen twenty six, at the age of eighty four. Like some of these guys live to like old ages, considering like what what their life was like. Mm, you know? Right. He's at the Mountain View Cemetery in. Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, one day, I'm wonder gonna... what the FDA took out of food. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> one day, I do want to go and like see all these graves and stuff. I definitely want to go to Tombstone one day. Mm-hmm. Now, Virgil, 
believe it or not, even though he had a dead arm, he would get more law positions, several more actually. And he'd be like a guard and, and like these positions. And, and one guy actually described like writing with Virgil in a posse during this time. He was writing fast and like, you know, Virgil's on this galloping horse and his his arm is just flapping. <laughs> you know what I mean? it, just fla- it just freaked him out, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, now, he has a pretty kind of crazy life because he wasn't wanted in... in uh, Arizona, so he kind of went back to Prescott and uh, Yavapai County uh, to do some mining and, and shit like that. And he actually survived a mining accident. Mm. He uh, it dislocated his right hip, both feet, and uh, his and his ankles were actually badly crushed. Oh and, yeah, he, uh, he got smushed. Yeah, yeah. He had a uh, serious cut on his head and bruises all over his body, and he never really totally recovered from that, mm. you know? <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. And he lived longer, but he he was in constant pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he was alive longer, but did he truly live? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he sort of did because uh, in 1898, Virgil received a bizarre, startling letter from a one Ooh. Mrs. Levi Law, mm. who was Virgil's daughter, Nellie, from his first marriage. It's like, whoa, you whoa, remember? Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. She thought yeah. he was dead, right? And yeah. Like, and, yeah, and they moved out got, to Oregon. Mm-hmm. And she got married to John Q. Law, I assume, <laughs> and uh, changed her last name. Yeah. It's like, fellow lawman. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, Virgil's wife, Allie Earp, she encouraged uh, Virgil to go see her and, and meet her. So they actually mm-hmm. went to Portland, Oregon, mm-hmm. met with his daughter, and like they had this very great reunion. And he actually met a grandchild he didn't even know existed either. Life was kind of like he found like new meaning in a lot of ways, this is even though he kept moving to Boomtowns. He started a new <laughs> saloon that would become Lovecraft. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that place is dope. Well, it's it called was, something else yeah. now. It's called it's the called Coffin, Coffin Club. Mm, ah, yeah. yes. It's still it's the same place, though. It's still the same uh, place. What a sweet thing for his wife to do to help him, uh, you know, reconnect with his daughter. It was a real uh, Allie Earp. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he, he eventually moved to Goldfield, Nevada. He tried and failed to open a saloon. There were too many saloons. Yeah. Uh, so he failed. Uh, he tried gambling. Uh, he failed at that. He actually got another law position, believe it or not. He wasn't well, though. Again, his injuries, and then he got, like, this pneumonia that, like, wouldn't go away. Not brutal. Yeah. Uh, So on October 19th, uh, 1905, Virgil Earp died at St. Mary's Hospital in Goldfield, Nevada. Mm. And Allie wrote that Virgil's last words were, quote, light my cigar and stay here and hold my hand, end quote. It's very sweet. One last Alley Earp. (laughs) Now, of all the Earp women, Alley actually outlived them all, and she had her memoirs printed in a sort of a controversial autobiography uh, called The Tombstone Travesty uh, by Frank Waters. And uh, she actually died in, on September, or sorry, November 17th, 1947. Jesus Whoa. Christ. Whoa. Yeah. She was 98 years old when she died. She was actually cleaning houses in Los Angeles. And, like, she was this old lady that would clean houses. And uh, she had a hip flask on her and shit. <laughs> she was this tough old lady. <laughs> you know? So there was a point in time, very short one, but there was a point in time, her and my father were alive at the exact same time. Right. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean... I'm just thinking how bonkers it is how her life was, like, being with the Earps and dealing with all that shit, and then going through two world wars yeah. throughout your yeah. life. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? That is yeah. insane. Yeah. She's like, if my husband and his brothers were here, they would have showed that Hitler a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they would have buffaloed him. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, there Both of them and thrown them out of the saloon. <laughs> <laughs> End of war. <laughs> Uh, I mean, isn't the reason why we had World War II because somebody metaphorically, philosophically, whatever speaking, uh, they buffaloed Hitler out of art school? And, and that's why he, he got upset. A lot of reasons, yeah. That being they probably just, one. They should have nipped it in the bud and buffaloed the Kaiser. Yeah. <laughs> just buffalo everybody. <laughs> buffalo the Kaiser also... Could be a World War II themed like Wiener Schnitzel sandwich that you could get at Subway, <laughs> or it would be like a Buffalo Wiener Schnitzel sandwich. Mm. I'd eat that. Yeah, uh, I would eat that or, too. Or a band. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can get behind that. Yeah. Buffalo the uh, Kaiser. Yeah. Buffalo the Kaiser. <laughs> mm-hmm. Allie was actually interred with Adelia Earp, which is the youngest Earp sister. And her husband, uh, they're actually in Mountain View Cemetery as well in San Bernardino. And, but Virgil's daughter actually paid to have his remains buried in the Riverview Cemetery in Portland. So you can Ooh. actually go and visit uh, Virgil Earp's grave in Portland, Oregon, which is oh, pretty wow. nuts. <laughs> you know? Now, Warren Earp was probably the most troublesome Earp, uh, even, even more so than Wyatt. He was a bully. In his later in his life, uh, with a lot to prove, he wanted to be like his brothers, but they were that way out of necessity, and uh, Warren wanted to do that without, you know, living that life first. Mm-hmm. For fun, and, yeah, mm-hmm. and it it didn't work out. And uh, Virgil even said once, "quote If Warren ever dies, he will be shot. He is too hasty, quick tempered, and too ready to pick a quarrel. Besides, he will not let bygones be bygones." And on that account, I expect he will meet a violent death. Mm. End quote. Hmm. It definitely predicted a few things. Mm-hmm. On July 6th, 1900, Warren became involved in an argument with a hooker ranch boss. Basically, uh, he was working on Henry Hooker's ranch. Mm. He got, in, he, he got in, in this drunken argument with this guy named Johnny Boyette inside Brown's Saloon in Wilcox, Arizona. And Warren is alleged to have said uh, during this argument, Boyette, get your gun and we'll settle this right here. I've got mine. Go get yours. And then uh, Boyette left and he returned with two 45 caliber Colt revolvers. <laughs> yeah, he called out Earp, you know. And he steps out of the saloon, like, (laughs) straight out of a Western. And the second he sees him, Boyette shoots both guns at him. Both bullets miss. Uh. Warren, this is super fucking badass. Warren calmly walks into the street and towards this guy. Mm -hmm. And he shoots twice again and both miss. Oh, God. And he keeps walking towards him, and he's and he pulls open his jacket, and he goes, I'm unarmed, dude. And he keeps walking, and the guy shoots him again, and this time it hits him right in the heart. He dies instantly oh, God. and hits Jesus the ground. Jesus Christ. Yeah. The guy was arrested, but they, they you know, they, they it was sort of the same stand your ground thing that Doc got off on. Right. It, you know, mm. like he thought he was armed, he wasn't armed, even though he showed he wasn't armed. They're like, well, he had a pocket knife in his hand. And he did, uh, but it... It's like, I'm going to stab you. <laughs> yeah. I'm slowly walking <laughs> over to you, and when I get there... Wait. Oh, my God. Wait, he, wait. He, he was a ton bar- uh, a ton berry at that time. Like, from, oh, yeah. from Final <laughs> Fantasy. Yeah. Like, just, yeah. like you, you can keep on attacking, but I'm going to keep walking totally. slowly. I didn't and then when I get up close to you, <laughs> stab, and you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. I mean, ton berries have been in the news lately, right? Yes. Hey, Kev, have you heard this one? Have you heard this one, Kev? <laughs> Hey, right about this? You heard about this? The Tom Bear, he's got a sex tape. (laughs) (laughs) Now, this guy that that killed Warren, he was terrified that the Earps were going to come and, you know, eviscerate him with a shotgun or something, Mm -hmm. you know? So he was terrified. Uh, Wyatt didn't get involved. Uh, Virgil did show up in an assumed name. He said that his brother was murdered. Of course he did. He was in a lot of ways. It was later falsely reported that the Earps avenged Warren's death by killing Boyette. But no, that's that's not true. The guy mm. the guy lived on. <laughs> mm. But he is buried in Wilcox, Arizona, in the Pioneer Cemetery. Basically, they're 
little boot hill that they have there. So now, right in the middle of this, before I catch back up with, with Wyatt and Bat, yeah. there's one more thing where the band got back together, guys. Oh, Ooh. cool. It was a little thing Hello? called the, the Dodge City War. Oh, no. Okay. And basically it started with reformed-minded people in Dodge that didn't want any of this anymore. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. They didn't want people gunned down in their streets. And Luke Short just became the owner of the Long Branch. And he mm -hmm. wanted to bring in some dancers. Uh, <laughs> oh. And they wouldn't let him. dance on your dick. Yeah. Yeah. And they wouldn't let him do it. Uh, oh. The new mayor was actually Larry Degger. Oh. Right? You might remember yeah, yeah, yeah. from earlier. Did not like the Mastersons either. But they forced Luke from town. They even did the same thing. You want to go west? You want to go east? You know? What Luke did is he went to Kansas City, and he mm -hmm. sent out the word to every gambler, bad man, hard case, shootist, and fighting man that he knew. Mm -hmm. Don't don't forget barbecueists. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm yeah, not gonna lie, some... I'm gonna say something controversial. Kansas City barbecue, one of my favorites. I'm I'm a Texas barbecue guy. I like Texas what a barbecue. Barbecueist be somebody who makes barbecue or the person who is the most barbecue? Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of column uh, A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> a barbecuist is actually somebody who dislikes barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> it's They're, ironic. They have, a, mm -hmm. they have a prejudice against barbecue. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So everyone descended. All these guys, all these sporting men mm. descended on Dodge City. Your ne'er do wells, uh, your roustabouts. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Clacking dice and throwing darts. <laughs> 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 so everyone from Bat and Jim Masterson, Charlie Bassett, Shotgun John Collins, mm. Texas Jack Vermillion, Prairie Dog Dave Morrow, <laughs> always has some William Patillion, <laughs> Johnny Green, and of course. Wyatt Earp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Johnny Green. <laughs> Johnny Green. Johnny Green, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. He did it. Chronic yeah, Keeper knows, knows who we're talking about. <laughs> He's buddies with Chet. Yeah. Yep. Chet Arthur. Chet. Yeah. I'm Chet. He's uh, yeah. Johnny's not here, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, they all descended, you know, and they're like, everyone in Dodge is like, oh, shit. Like, is there going to be some trouble here now? Like, all fuck, these guys. Fuck, fuck, fuck. And, like, all the papers are even, like, Doc Holliday's coming into town, too. But, like, he was way too unwell to come at this point, yep. so, like, the he doctor wasn't there. The doctor is in. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor is out. Yeah, the yeah. doctor was out. But yeah. uh, the headline said, the doctor is in. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. His name then, helped. <laughs> the next day, the paper said, our mistake, that was a scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Degger's actions during the height of the seasonal cattle drive boom would ruin the saloons and related companies' business. And uh, the governor of Kansas, the Santa Fe Railroad, which did a lot of business in Dodge, they urged Mayor Degger to quickly resolve this con conflict. But we couldn't have any trouble fucking with our business is basically what they're saying. Uh, Short and Earp. And all these other guys, they refused to compromise. They would not back down. And they kind of scared them, and Mayor Degger backed down and let them open Luke Short's long branch again. Mm -hmm. During this time in 1883, June 10th, 1883, they all took a picture together. And that's that picture of all of them together. Mm -hmm. and, and they called it the uh, Dodge City Peace Commission. Mm -hmm. Right, sort of like with a smile that you know <laughs> they're here to muscle the gov local government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? The following day, pretty much all of them scattered. Like after they took the picture, all of them scattered. The thing was over. No bullets had been fired. No one was dead. It was all just this, you know, bloodless affair. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> they looked at each other. They smiled. They nodded, and then they just turned into dust and <laughs> flew away. Yeah, and uh, and and at least that's what the people saw. That day. <laughs> yeah, it was it was their reputations alone, you know, that carried yeah. the day. And just a little bit, 
of skeleton magic. And that's, when the, that's when the camera pans up and you see Doc Holliday's like <laughs> looking. Like, uh, He's a lich now. Yeah. Now, you know, Luke Short, he had his own storied career after this. But Bat, who, you know, had that law position in Trinidad, when he helped Doc out uh, with that thing, he got crushed in the uh, elections. They were like, if you're just going to help out people like Doc Holliday, we, you don't need to be an elected official. If you're so, just going to help people, you don't need yeah. to be an elected official. Yeah. Well, guys like him. No, I, know, I was joking. <laughs> yeah. So he instead became a full-time sporting man. Mm. Uh, he was super into, you know, gambling, poker, pharaoh, horse racing, but his main thing was prize fighting. Oh, yeah. Now nice. you're going to say, okay. is it regular boxing or foxy? <laughs> <laughs> well, these guys saw, you know, boxing come from bare knuckle boxing, you know, all the, you know, they saw the early days of boxing. They watched to get less fun over the years. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, 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 they <laughs> less, less the, fun the to evolution. Watch. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a story for a different day because the the history of boxing is I- incredibly silly and uh, hilarious, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to get it into it too much. But yeah, like we you gotta know, do an episode on that. Oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Jack Dempsey, you know all those guys. But there's yeah, a uh, all there's the a huge little sketch about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They used to think that was the best way. And it was because of the rules at the time. That's what made it the best way. Fights would go on w- way too long. Way too long. <laughs> anyway, uh, he, he would see the bare knuckle days. He would see the Great White Hope era, mm. which was this whole... Th- it, it was some of the most important things to, to happen to this country that, like, even Martin Luther King Jr. said, like, the Great White Hope era was so important for this country's uh, growth. Please tell um, me that's not it, the same as, like, Birth of a Nation, when you say the Great White Hope. Real quick on the Great White Hope, there was a boxer named Jack Johnson, and he was really fucking good. And he was, uh, he was like the Muhammad Ali of his era. Huh. And okay. he was unapologetically black, and that's why white people hated him. And the thing was, is he was, he was the cha- heavyweight champion of the world, and white people wanted that title for themselves, right? Okay. So they kept trying to find these fighters to fight Jack Johnson, and that's why they called it the Great White Hope, okay? Right. To beat Jack Johnson, right? It's a story for a different day, but Bat was definitely involved with all that stuff. Holy and shit. so was Wyatt in a lot of ways. That's amazing. Yeah, really? we totally have to do it an is. episode on this shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's super interesting. Because I think um, Jack Johnson, I think uh, Banana Pancakes and, you know, Mamby Pamby bullshit girlfriend music. Right, yeah, yeah, different different yeah. Jack Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> story for a different day, but it's a great story. Jim Masterson, he went on to have sort of a storied law career, but he died on March 31st, 1895, aged 39, because he got galloping consumption, mm. which is based, you know, tuberculosis that works real quick, mm-hmm. you know, okay. rather than what Doc had, you know. Did the slow stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't he know may which have one's given. worse. Yeah, he may have given tuberculosis to several people because he may not have worn gloves while mm-hmm. he was operating on people <laughs> and oh, coughing yeah. and stuff. Uh, coughing he straight was the into the open Mercury wounds. of his time. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ! Wow! Dude. Come on! What? <laughs> it's majorly influential. Yeah. <laughs> In several ways. <laughs> Bat, as he frequented these uh, dance halls and, and saloons and stuff, he got into a couple of scrapes in Denver. One where he was watching a show, and this uh, woman was sitting on his lap. Her husband. I'm listening. Saw mm-hmm. it. They got in a fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. She w- w- like wanted to stay with him. They broke up. It, it was a whole thing. But Bat actually did have a, a, a paper, though, in Dodge City. Uh, called the Vox Populi, where he used it like in a in a like an Alexander Hamilton sort of way. Mm-hmm. He used it to talk shit about his rivals and and shit like that. It only lasted for for one issue, but when he went <laughs> <laughs> when he went it was to a pilot. Uh, it's like yeah. a zine. Where yeah, you're it's just a like, zine. Fuck these guys <laughs> passing it out at shows. <laughs> when he when he went to uh, Denver though, uh, he started writing more, usually about boxing. He would talk shit about his rivals there and, and talk shit about his political rivals. 
he would rail against, you know, any of these boxing promoters that would pay to get favorable, you know, reviews, even though it was probably like a setup fight, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, so he would expose people. He kind of got underneath people's skin in Denver mm -hmm. for doing that. But his style of writing, he was he was totally self-educated. His style of writing, like these newspaper men back east, really started to love. Was it just trash talking? It was like a brand of trash talking that he mm. was really good at. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> okay. He reinvented uh, the game. Yeah. Shit talking. <laughs> yeah. It was around this time that Bat met Emma Moulton, who was a dancer at one of these clubs. They would live together in common law. Some people said that they got married. There's no real proof for that. Bat's younger brother said that they were married on a certain day, on a certain year. There's no record of that. They were probably just common law. They actually moved to New York City after they were fed up with Denver. They moved to New York City, and Bat, within 24 hours, was arrested. Oh, no. <laughs> he was arrested uh, because he was accused... He was accused on bunco charges uh, for trying to scam a Mormon <laughs> at a sixteen thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean, good for him trying to scam that Mormon. <laughs> well, the yeah. the charges sounds turns like he already he... got scammed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out he was like kind of guilty by association. He was standing next to the guy, but he was still fined for carrying guns in public, mm -hmm. and he didn't know that like that was frowned upon in New York City. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's New York. Come on, yeah. Now, carrying what's, what's a couple guns? It's okay. Yeah. He's like, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, I carry my guns on my hips and not in the waistband of my trousers. You Philistines. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if, if only he had some urban camo, and by that I mean a ghillie suit made out of trash. Because New York City <laughs> is trash. Yeah. I love New York City, for its own reasons. He, he would actually go back and forth just a couple of times to New York and, and, and Denver, because he thought that there was more, there was more opportunity for prize fighting in, in New York. And there was. And uh, the thing was, too, is uh, he got a bodyguard position for a millionaire named George, uh, George Gould. So he Elliot like, Gould's uh, grandfather. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> George Gould. Ooh. Gould, yeah. Yeah, he's living the skeleton life. <laughs> no, big time. <laughs> Engaged in the skeleton lifestyle. Yeah, yeah if you will. It's, it's, it's just swinging, but it's people with tuberculosis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of rumors going around, like his reputation sort of preceded him, so there's rumors going around that he had killed 28 men cool. in cold blood, you know, out, out in the West, you know. And he was like, no, one guy, you know, got up and left. Yeah, he got better, you know. Killed 27. Uh, yeah, no, no, it was, it was much lower. Uh, <laughs> he lived in Manhattan, and he considered himself a Broadway man, because yeah. he lived uh, on Broadway. He didn't even consider himself a New Yorker. He didn't consider himself a Manhattaner. He even said, like, like they tell me there's an area called Greenwich Village, but I've never been there. <laughs> like, it may as well have been Kansas to him. You know? <laughs> but he hung out at these places, and, and he knew everyone who was everybody at this time in New York City. And they loved his stories and shit, and they'd gather around and listen to the stories of the, the Wild West with Bat Masterson, you know. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, one guy that, that got him a job writing a column for uh, the New York Morning Telegraph. Basically, he could write about whatever he wanted. <laughs> he, oh, you know? yeah. It was a daily paper, so it was like three times a week or some <sighs> shit like that. And Talk it was usually on boxing. Daily. Yeah. He was usually unboxing. He did it for the rest of his life. He actually didn't understand baseball very well. He didn't like it. He thought it was boring. He also didn't like football either. Mm -hmm. It was new and he didn't understand it. He didn't like it. He was like, boxing's where it's at. You know? yeah. I mean, I He's would like, agree what, what with what him, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why gild the lily with all these extra rules and whatnot when you could just have two men punching each other in the face until one of them dies? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, one of the men isn't supposed to die? Yeah. Well, uh, 
Yeah, and the rules See, would change. Some of these fights are going for over a hundred rounds. A <laughs> hundred <laughs> you <know>? years. He <laughs> <laughs> uh, would also be appointed a federal deputy marshal by none other than Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> because Teddy Roosevelt liked having Old West gunfighters around. You don't yeah, say. Like, yeah, he liked having Pat Garrett around, uh, mm-hmm. Bat's old friend, Bill Tillman. And he actually gave them Marshall's positions as well. Cool. And, like, Bat didn't want, want to go back <laughs> out west, so he goes, well, how about you're just, like, a, a, a federal deputy marshal of New York? And he was like, dope. Cool. And it was like, he didn't actually have to do anything. The only time anyone ever saw him is when he came in and got his check. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that is the one. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> He's like, uh, you wanna, you wanna be, you wanna be deputized. He's like, not really. He's like, well, good thing this isn't a real badge. It's a sugar cookie. And I made them for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Checks are available every uh, other Wednesday. Come on yeah, into yeah. the office. The next administration, the Taft administration, thought it was a waste of money oh. uh, to just pay these guys for sort of ceremonial offices. Yeah, but they were like. Oh, great, and, and that's why crime's <laughs> rampant. Thanks, you yeah. fucks. <laughs> Go get stuck uh, in a bathtub. <laughs> that didn't actually happen. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, you weren't there, Jerry. You weren't there. <laughs> so, yeah, he dissolved the whole position. Bat was definitely a recognized man around New York at, at, at this time. He He was notorious for his scathing columns and... And the fact that he almost never guessed the 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 fight's outcome correctly, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he was almost always wrong. It was part of his style. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but something that that kind of puts like just our country's history and all of this into perspective is that like when you go back and read Bat's old articles, he definitely him and everyone else they use. Every racial epithet that you can <laughs> conceive of, God. every single one of them, and they even called him like like Bat's racism was ambivalent. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's not that he it's not like Doc. Like it wasn't an outright hatred. It's that he referred to them in a denigrating, lesser than way. <laughs> every single time. It was a uh, it was matter of fact racism. It wasn't well, like yeah. And everyone, was, and everyone yeah. did it. Like it was rampant, and like even some prize fighters chose their nicknames based off of some of these epithets. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was also very much a male of his time. He was against women's suffrage. Mm-hmm. Happy Female History Month, by the way. Women's mm-hmm. History Month. Yeah. Hey, I mean, uh, women shouldn't be able to vote. And if I could read, I would read the ballot. No, he knew how to read. He actually said, "Like he got out of Denver because the women started voting there." Ugh. And it's like, oh, shut up, dude. <laughs> you know. I need anyway, a, it, I need a it just shines lady. a light. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It just shines a light on on the times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, Bat also knew Tex Rickard. Again, this guy's a story for a different day for the for the history of boxing, because uh, Tex Rickard he was a, he was a man. He was a boxing promoter. He was known as a man with a golden touch. Almost everything he did just fucking turned to gold. And I'll. A little bit more on him later. Is that where the Golden Glove moniker comes from, or no? No, no, okay. this is more like monetarily speaking. Okay. Uh, Tex Rickard, he, he had a long career, but he... he like, it has he added nothing on... to do with his love of the pee fetish. <laughs> no. Uh, he added on to Madison Square Garden. Okay. Um, he, uh, your... he was a big mover and shaker, you know. Um, yeah, it's penis after he's done urinating on women. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay, okay. I didn't, uh, none of that's true. None of that's true. It could be. Stuff up. It could be. You yeah. know what? I like Chris's, Chris's way of doing things. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't Honestly, say it anywhere, but maybe it's just so common back then that no one thought of writing it down. <laughs> In your history books, Jerry, does it, says, does it say he wasn't? In, he didn't have a pee fetish? You can't prove a negative, Chris. That's what I'm saying. You can't, <laughs> you can't disprove a negative. 
Uh, yeah. I, uh, let, let's remember all the way back in, in episode one of this uh, series, uh, Tyler said that he wanted to both be a Wild West boy and a city boy. Yeah. Bat was those things. Yeah. He was both like the city boy stepping off the trolley, flick, flicking a coin, and he was also like the badass Wild West guy. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> you stole my dreams! <laughs> you stole my dreams. <laughs> But on October 25th, 1921, at the age of 67, Bat Masterson died at his desk, at his mm. typewriter, the Morning Telegraph, writing a column. He died of a massive heart attack. And the last lines that he had written are this. This is great. Quote, I suppose these ginks who argue that because the rich man gets ice in the summer, and the poor man gets it in the winter. Things are breaking even for both. Maybe so, but I'll swear I can't see it that way. End quote. That's, Ellipses, uh, oh my heart, my heart, help me, help, please. <laughs> End quote then, again. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right try, try That's not my fault. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I, I was hoping that... Uh, it, when he was over his typewriter, he was writing a short story about the Knights of the Round Table getting chased by a monster. <laughs> and no. Just when it was about to get him, he had a heart attack and died. <laughs> it's a, that's a double Monty Python and the Holy uh, Grail. It's also from uh, the reference. same scene, I realize. Yeah. It oh, is. yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's two elements from that scene. So, Bat Masterson, William Barclay Masterson, was buried at Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx. You can actually go see a Wild West legend in the Bronx in New York City, which is pretty nuts. That's Up badass. there with AOC. <laughs> yeah. His epitaph on his uh, tombstone reads, Loved by everyone. Mm. Which he sort of was. Mm. <laughs> he sort yeah, of I mean, was. Unless you got on his bad side. <laughs> but, yeah. but even then, you're like, side? I get it, Bat. I get it. Yeah. Now, the character in Guys and Dolls of Sky Masterson Ooh. is actually based on Bat Masterson. A friend of his wrote this short story while he knew him, and it was eventually turned into Guys and Dolls. Mm. Oh, no shit. I thought you were like, a friend yeah. of him wrote Guys and Dolls. <laughs> 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 a friend of his. Well, I will keep that in mind if they ever make a movie based off of Guys and Dolls, and it's they on have. an airplane that I'm on. <laughs> they have. That young it, man grew up to be Abe Burroughs. <laughs> Is uh, that who wrote uh, that? I, 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 don't, I don't know who wrote Guys and Dolls, the musical. Um, they did make Steven a movie. Sondheim. You know this. You know this, right? Like, with Marlon Brando? Mm-hmm. And was it Guys Sinatra? and Dolls? Are oh, you talking about the, the one movie? where he's in the jungle with Martin Sheen? Mm. <laughs> That's not Guys it's and Dolls. Apocalypse Now. Uh, oh. It's Apocalypse Now. Chris, I've you were right. Uh, Abe that. Burroughs wrote Ooh. Guys Abe and Burroughs. Dolls. Okay. Okay. And uh, how does Joe Chris know who Swirling. wrote Guys and Dolls? Because I Google shit when I'm watching movies. <laughs> And you were watching Guys and Dolls? No, I was probably watching Tick, Tick, Boom, and that oh. led to, like, Sodheim, and then that led to, like, who fucking knows. Okay. You went down it's a rabbit hole. hole. Yeah. Remember when I was explaining to you on the podcast what, like, uh, cuneiform bones were? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of shit. <laughs> One little tidbit about Bat. It is said that the famous Brown Derby in Los Angeles was modeled after the hat that Bat Masterson wore. Cool. The brown derby. Yeah. So there you go. Holy uh, shit. Surprisingly, Bat is going to come up in a lot more episodes. I, I ran through his second life. He had a whole other second life. But he's going to come up again uh, in the history of boxing. Cool. In a lot of things, actually. Uh, super weird. I had a second life for about two years. Uh, circa... 2009 to 2011, I want to say. Uh, Second Life wasn't my thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no. I never I, really understood Second Life. We had Life. a friend who made assets it, for that game, and yeah, yes, they're the yes. kind you're thinking of. Yeah, yes. uh, I mean, that, that shit was like proto-metaverse, <laughs> and uh, now we are... I had a are... Second Life for a while. Then I finally got my hands on that box of evidence that she was using and hanging over my head. And I stopped paying her rent, and I cut her off. There you go. <laughs> Tell my yeah. 
I, I went to the wrong Christmas with the wrong gifts. It was a real Mrs. Doubtfire situation. Mm. Ah, you just wanted to see your those. kids. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was switched, though, you know? It was a Freaky yeah. Friday situation. Mm -hmm. Not real, not a Freaky Friday situation. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Wyatt and Josie, let's catch back up with them. Mm. Uh, they bounced around the West they, from Boomtown to Boomtown. They went up to Eagle City, Idaho. And for our listeners in Idaho, this is not Eagle, Idaho. This is Eagle City, Idaho, in northern Idaho, oh. uh, close to Ketchum, modern-day Ketchum. It was a boom town. Anyway, um, he actually got a law, pos uh, law position there, short-lived law position. He worked with James as well. It it's here that we kind of get some weird news with, with Wyatt that maybe he was involved with claim jumping. So, mm. like, you know. Started that restaurant. <laughs> big, big, big pile of mashed potatoes. Mm. <laughs> well, you know, if somebody marks a claim, you know, a mining yeah. claim, and then you go over and, and mine it anyway yeah. Yeah. and take the gold. You yeah, drink the milkshake. Involved in that. Yeah. yeah, basically. And he also Snatch could have... that gravy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he, uh, he may have been there with Texas Jack and Turkey Creek Jack Johnson. There's also... <laughs> I know. Uh... <laughs> There's uh, also some evidence that he could have been involved in a gold bricking scam. Cool. Where you paint bricks to look like mm -hmm. gold bricks, you know. They moved uh, back to California. California is where they would winter. They would move somewhere else, you know, and then when it was winter, they would come back to California. You oh, know, like birds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, they, they went around, you know, San Diego, San Francisco, Los Angeles, all around that area, Southern California. Now, as Wyatt and Josephine moved around California and opened saloons and closed saloons and you know, got mining claims and sold mining claims, Josephine actually became kind of a hardcore gambling addict and gambled a lot of their money, and it kind of threw a monkey wrench into their relationship a little bit, and a lot of people think there was infidelity on both sides. But they still stayed together for the rest of their lives. They had their ups and downs, you know, kind of a deal. Big yeah, ups dear. and big downs. It, it, <laughs> it was a regular Soprano situation for her, for yeah, them. A I little bit. Say. Yeah. yeah. Have your good days and your gross days. Mm -hmm. your gross days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shake. That says, says that she's shaking out a bucket of worms onto the <laughs> living room floor. Yeah. Rolling in them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got a bucket of bugs for you. No, Don't uh, call me Sadie. It's Miss Er. Or no. <laughs> it's Miss Er. <laughs> Josie, if you're nasty. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, well, now um, I'm hard. Yeah. <laughs> now, Wyatt was a, uh, he was a last minute choice referee for this boxing match. Because uh, he had refereed all these fights and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. he knew what he was doing. It was a it was a big fight, and it was a heavyweight championship of the world. It was between Bob's Fit Simmons against uh, Tom Sharkey. Mm. Um, Sharkey was at the yeah. It was in San Francisco, and what happened was is that Wyatt was used to he was used to these earlier days, these earlier rules. He wasn't used to the Marquess of Queensberry rules, which is what these this fight was going to be under, right? So there's some confusion there. The Marquess of Queensberry rules? Yeah. Is that Mar like... Marquess of Queensberry Marquis? rules? Marquess? No. No, it's spelled differently. I don't know what you're talking Marquess, about. Marquess of Queensberry rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that like some English rules where they like, I don't know, let yeah. a rabbit out and it gets chased by a fox and there's like a guy with a horn and <laughs> mm -hmm. you have to well, stop and drink tea part way through or something? Yeah. So basically if no. if if you got knocked down, you could you there was a time limit from when you got back up. Yeah. Like the TKO. So basically yeah. yeah, so basically there before this it relied on the guy to give up in the fight. You know, so he could be he could get 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 back up a little bit later and then still want to fight, right? So and that this is how these fights lasted so long, right? It, it's you could get knocked down, but you could get up again. You just got to <laughs> no. make sure that nothing's going to keep you down. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
It didn't depend on like ten seconds or whatever, a ten mm-hmm. count or whatever. Yeah, the, the, those are the Chumbawamba rules. <laughs> yes, the Marquis de Chumbawamba. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he was he he was more educated under the London Prize uh, Ring rules, um, which were a little different. When he stepped down on on stage, he had his guns on him. Mm. Probably, <laughs> probably just because he always Forced had his guns it. on him. Yeah, and they booed him because they thought maybe he was going to rig the fight. You mm-hmm. know. No, that's how he was dinging the bell. He would shoot from center uh, <laughs> center arena. Ding ding. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened was, is it was it was a long bout. It went rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds. There was still no limit on rounds. Fitzsimmons was clearly winning. You know what I mean? He was kicking Sharky's ass, and he Fitzsimmons gave Sharky a, a like a famous punch that he had a solar plexus punch cool. to knock the wind out of him. Gave him and a full Wyatt, language. yeah, <laughs> but Wyatt called it a low blow. And called it a foul. Oh, fuck off. And, well, he was under different rules, and uh, there was some stickiness, so maybe, maybe he was paid, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, the $10,000, like, purse went to Sharky mm-hmm. and not Fitzsimmons. And the crowd went insane. You know, they mm-hmm. wanted to, like, kill Wyatt <laughs> right blood. then and there. If he didn't have guns on him, right? And everyone knew he was this bad man from Arizona, you know, not knowing that he had the rest of his history. But, uh, like, they made cartoons about it where, like, (laughs) he's holding the money and and a gun, you know, and rigging the fight and stuff. It's unclear whether or not the fight was rigged or not. Mm. Now, in his lifetime, Wyatt was more famous for this incident than anything else. They even called, like... If you fuck something up, they would call it erping it. No, oh, you erped it. Because of this. You erped it, you know. I like Don't it. erped it. Yeah. And even Bat lost a lot of money on that fight. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but he defended him. Somehow. Uh, you know. He's like, he's and, and, fucked up way worse than this. Yeah. <laughs> I've known him a long time. I've seen him fuck up a lot. This is like a three out of ten. <laughs> well... And you're not far off because these other newspaper men from across the country, because everyone was interested in prize fighting at this time, they uh, dug up some old shit about Wyatt, you know what I mean, and oh, ran no. it in their paper, you know, like, oh, this this OK Corral fight, you shot these unarmed men, you know, like ca- that kind of shit. Right. And mm-hmm. so, like, like, the 30 seconds of his long life that, like, came to define him haunted him. In his own lifetime, more than anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He got canceled over social media. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> For some he shit was that he did, like, 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 a bunch of years ago. Yeah. Yep, yep. He was a regular um, Joss Whedon. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> he, you, and he was a regular Louis C.K. There you go. <laughs> Now, as Wyatt and Josie kind of bounced between Boomtown and Boobtown, one place that they had to go during this time was Alaska. Ah, yeah. During the Klondike Skagway. Gold Rush. Skagway. Did they go to yeah. Skagway? Well, well, actually, remember how we talked about all the different places people would quit? Yep. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They quit at Juneau. Mm. <laughs> okay. Which is like the first place you'd get to, and then you go to Skagway. They mm-hmm. quit at Juneau the first time. And then they kept going back to different places, right? Like, mm-hmm. they went to Wrangell. They went to all these other places. They got and, wrangled. Uh, yeah. yeah. They got wrangled in a and, wrangle. Yeah. Tex Rickard, who I mentioned earlier with the Golden Touch. Right. Mm. He was one of the first people up in uh, Dawson to stake a, a claim that hit pay dirt. And he lost it all uh, to thieves and uh, roustabouts in Dawson. Mm. He thought, well, let me try again in, in Nome, Alaska. And he hit Pater again and made another fortune again. That's why they, they called, like, he had this golden touch. He could, he could have these mm. million-dollar prize fights, things that weren't even thought of, you know, and also hit Pater several times. For this life to be over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they're, like, they're like, everything he does, he's so lucky. He just keeps on making all this money. 
Why does he sit at the bar looking at that old photograph and crying every night? <laughs> <laughs> He's cursed. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, uh, Tex Rickard was also a, a Kansas lawman for a time, and he knew Wyatt. And when he knew, when he found out that Wyatt was in Alaska, he sent him like a telegram, like, "Hey, dude, come up to Nome, and like, let's open a saloon and and whatnot," you know. So Wyatt and Josie went up there, and, like, they opened a saloon called the Dexter. Um, they had prostitution. Josie didn't like that. Uh, but they made a lot of money. And even Wyatt said, from his own mouth, he was mining the miners. He mm -hmm. said that. I, I, I went up to Nome and mined the miners. <laughs> you know. When they sold all of their shit in Alaska, came back to the lower 48, a lot of people say that they made, like, a shit ton of money. It's disputed. How much money they made. But they made enough to open a bar in a little place called Pioneer Square. Oh, oh Seattle. Nice. wait a minute. We've been there. Yeah, yeah. He had a place called the Union Club in Pioneer Square. There was illegal gambling. Cool. There was all sorts of illegal shit Sounds going like on. Pioneer Square Just... in the modern day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds yeah. terrifying, and I'm terrified of Pioneer Square. Yeah. He actually rang in the new century in Seattle, uh, oh. Wyatt did. He showed up in, in late 1889, and he left in 1900 because he didn't basically pay tribute to the local boss, like the Soapy Smith of Seattle at this time. And, uh, uh, definitely, definitely a story for a different day. A guy named John Considine. Mm. He, despite all of all of the things that John Considine tried to do to run him out of Seattle, uh, he couldn't do it. The bar just kept thriving. And, like, there were incidences where, you know, Wyatt pistol-whipped a guy, you know, mm -hmm. on First Avenue. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. oh, th th this sounds like a, just a regular show at El Corazon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eventually, the Washington, like, the state authority stepped in and closed Wyatt's establishment. They actually took all the furniture out uh, of the establishment, piled it up on First Avenue, and burned it. Mm. Cool. <laughs> so he had to leave Seattle. Uh, That's crazy how times change. Now if you want to see furniture burning in the street, you got to go to Tacoma. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I was going to say Everett, yeah. but okay. Uh, yeah. You could definitely see that in Seattle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Third, third and Pike. Yeah. I've seen Cop a trash can on fire not far from Third and Pike. <laughs> Th Third and Pike, uh, right next to the uh, the McDonald's over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That McDonald's is closed permanently. Is all of all of those shops there are closed because that one's huh. that's been open. I mean, I've seen that open pretty within the last, last year. week. There was three shootings and two stabbings, and uh, I so was just new? reading an article. Yeah, I, well, no, that that frequency of violent crime is is. Oh, it's, it's always been an issue yeah, in that area. Like that's that's the corridor. I think it's still open, though. It's got to be uh, open. No, that, McDo that McDonald's is closed. I did not know that. Like, like straight up all the business. Like, it's it's worse than it was, it's ever been. I've been following huh. the news on it. I'm not that like, surprised. Yeah, hmm. the, the mayor's meeting with business leaders to try to, like, figure out a plan that's going to get the businesses to reopen because there's a bunch of places that just, like... Like Peroshki, Peroshki's gone forever. They're like, fuck it, we're done. Mm -hmm. We don't want to deal with. Yeah. We don't want to deal with it down here anymore. Anyway, that's uh, interesting. The mayor of Seattle's meeting with Mayor McCheese to open up the uh, McDonald's on Third and Pike. So mm -hmm. we need yeah. to release the strategic cheeseburger reserves. <laughs> 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 now Wyatt and Josie did did try to have children. Um, unfortunately, however, Josephine miscarried twice which was incredibly tragic mm. and unfortunate. They didn't try after that, and they never would have any direct descendants. But they pressed on, though. Although their relationship could be strained at times, they stayed together. They moved to Nevada with Virgil, and uh, Tex Rickert actually met up with them in, in Nevada, where Tex Rickert threw the fight of the century, the one I was just talking about, uh, with, with Jack Johnson mm. uh, in, in a place that would become Reno, uh, Nevada. Um, so you can say Reno Wyatt, one. <laughs> Wyatt was there. Like, that's why Tex came down to Nevada, you know what I mean? It's because Wyatt was there. Huh. And 
Bat Masterson, like when he went to that fight, he met up with Wyatt Earp for the last time. Mm. It would be the last time they would see each other was at this fight. And it was just a point in history. You mm. know what I mean? It's crazy that, yeah. that it would be this this point in history. James Jeffries and Jack Johnson. It, it was... It, it's, it's such a crazy story. Anyway, while, while they were living, uh, the Earps were back in California. Billy Breckenridge uh, called on Wyatt. Uh, if you remember, he was one of Johnny Bean's uh, deputies. Mm -hmm. Turns out Billy Breckenridge was going to write a book about the Wild West, and he wanted some details, some dates, and shit like that from Wyatt. And he agreed, and he gave him information. And when uh, Billy Breckenridge's book, El Dorado, came out, it, it was full of falsehoods. It made uh, Wyatt Earp look like uh, a complete villain who shot completely unarmed men, you know, and he was furious mm -hmm. uh, that he couldn't sort of tell his own story, you know. He's like, you made me out to be a criminal. He's like, I just put in the book what you told me. He's like, I didn't tell you any of that. He's like, well, like you told in, me some things. In, in Billy Breckenridge's book, like, Tom and Frank McClowry are, like, holding their hands above their heads going, don't shoot, don't shoot. You know? <laughs> like, I have it's a not family. At all the truth. <laughs> yeah. He's confusing that with uh, his experiences at Sandy Creek. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's like, oh, those are the people who are begging for mercy. Yeah, holding up their hands. Yeah. Uh, oops, oops. Right. Yeah. So Wyatt and, and, and Josie, they wanted to, they wanted to do the, the same thing. They wanted to cash in on, on their story. You know, they knew their story was a good story. And Josie hired this guy, a uh, fellow by the name of Flood, uh, <laughs> yeah, to write yeah, yeah. their story. At every point, Josie would be like, no, it's got to be clean. It's got to be a clean story. Wyatt doesn't drink. Mm -hmm. uh, he's unmarried. <laughs> he's not with anybody. Uh, and he has to save a woman from a fire. Just put that in there. Yeah, like all these... Also, like, he's Spider-Man. Yeah, he's squeaky <laughs> clean. <laughs> and it's a pretty cheesy book, honestly. And the book does exist. Uh, I've only read ex excerpts, but uh, it's very cheesy. Sounds and like it a failed. lot of bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it failed. Wyatt was still sort of living in obscurity. Wyatt liked Los Angeles a lot, he was finding out. Uh, it was the last outlaw town of the West, really, because it was founded by outlaws, right? Like, mm -hmm. it was founded by people trying to get away from Thomas Edison patents, you know what I mean? No. If you wanted to show or shoot a movie anywhere, you needed his permission. So mm -hmm. they wanted yeah. to get as far away from Thomas Edison as possible. Yeah, so, Anthony Kiedis hated Thomas Edison. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> he loves uh, California. He sings like, about it all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He's 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 making up some words and he's like dibba dibba da California. California. Yeah. I'm from California. Yeah. California. Yeah. I'm from California. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That he's, hit yeah. by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Zach, I'm pretty uh, sure that is. Uh, th there's a copyright on what you just sang. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we're gonna I'm get sorry. flagged yeah. for that. <laughs> now, these days, if you want to sing songs about California, you got to get as far away from Anthony Kiedis as possible. Yeah. Because he's got all the patents. He's got California. Patent on California. <laughs> California. On California. I don't know. Mike Patton uh, has been giving him a run for his money for those California patents. Ah. That's what they call him. Been stirred out with that name. <laughs> yeah. Wyatt would uh, go down to the movie sets and stuff because they would be shooting oh. westerns, you know, down there. You're filming me. You're yeah. doing me now. Because it was straight up like, oh, He's there's drunk. a cowboy. Get drunk. right in here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he would go down there. He would talk with the, the stars, and he knew the stars, and he palled around with them. Uh, some of the early film stars that he knew uh, were Tom Mix, mm. William S. Hart, John Ford, mm. uh, Raoul Walsh, Charlie Chaplin, mm, and a young really. gaffer, a young gaffer uh, named Marion Morrison, mm. who would later change his name to John George Wayne. George Lucas. Oh. <laughs> John Wayne. Uh, late in life, John Wayne said that he modeled his signature walk after Wyatt. That's probably bullshit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it goes along with the Wyatt Earp legend, you know. And one time they actually uh, gathered all of these Shakespeare plays for Wyatt and read them to Wyatt. He's like, what and they're the like, what are you, 
Yeah, he was. They're, they're, they're like, "What do you think, Wyatt?" And, yeah, and I think he goes, "You're a bunch of queers." <laughs> <laughs> well, he was a man of few words. Let's remember. He said, uh, "Quote that feller Hamlet sure was talkative. He wouldn't have lasted long in Kansas." <laughs> End quote. <laughs> Uh, I could take them. Yeah, it, like and like literally, thing, it's it's just like it's like your friends your friends showing you their favorite movie and afterward being like, I could fuck up all the characters in that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I could fight them. Yeah. Yeah. I could fight Hamlet. No big deal. Yeah, but entertainment. Head in a toilet. Yeah, <laughs> entertainment for Wyatt was different than entertainment <laughs> for that. <laughs> and the thing was, is like. Like, Wyatt got, like, arrested all the time, even in Los Angeles, even in these days. Like, one time he got charged with uh, an attempt to fleece a realty broker into being in a fake pharaoh game. <laughs> like, like, the thing was, is the charges were dropped because, like, uh, no money had actually changed hands. Mm -hmm. So he was actually charged with vagrancy and then mm. let off on $500, but it shows you that, like, why it didn't stop some of these, <laughs> some of these things, you know? Yeah, he flies from a different here, time. Oh, shit, here we go again, getting pulled over for being wider up on a Friday night again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Now, as the story goes, the only reason why anyone knows who Wyatt Earp is is because of Bat Masterson. Mm. As the story goes, uh, he's at the White House, bad is with these other guys mm -hmm. and he tells Teddy Roosevelt he says the real story of the Wild West will never be told until Wyatt Earp speaks mm -hmm. and Wyatt Earp is not speaking there you go now yeah now there was a young press secretary that was in the room that overheard this and his name was Stuart George M. Lucas. Lake <laughs> Stuart M. Lake yeah he it, it kind of stuck with him he decided he was going to write the book on Wyatt Earp's life. Uh, did he also start the band uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, although, a uh, good prog rock band, I will say. I like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> they're fun. That's why I mentioned them. Yeah. So, Stuart Lake goes out to, to meet Wyatt Earp, and what he finds is this old man uh, mm. in a rocking chair. Everything that Stuart Lake is is like interviewing him on. Wyatt only answers in one of three responses. And that's yep, nope, and don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not helpful. <laughs> yeah. well, he, he, was, he was pretty old, right? You might say he was living the skeleton life. <laughs> <laughs> he was in his 60s. Old, I mean, he's just a man of few words, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. He was a man of action, right? He, he, was, yeah. he was wasting away in Skullavitaville at that point in time. There you go. No, no. <laughs> that was a stretch. I'm sorry. I, got, January... I, I don't have a better Margaritaville skeleton mashup, dude. I, think I know. Was... I, I tried. I tried. A for effort on that one. I'm just going to be honest. Thanks. <laughs> now, on January 13th, 1929, the last of the Earp brothers, Wyatt Barry Stapp Earp passed away and his last words before he laid down and passed into a coma were suppose suppose and then he died. Mm. You know uh, what he's going to say? Something about his skeleton life. <laughs> <laughs> it was from a urinary tract bladder infection. Uh, is, mm. is how he died. He's living that urinary tract bl bladder infection life. <laughs> Clearly wasn't uh, living that uh, cranberry juice. That's life. what I was yeah. thinking. No. Yeah. yeah. That's when you need, you need that cran vodka in your life. Josephine was too grief-stricken to attend the funeral, but among his pallbearers were uh, William S. Hart and Tom Mix. Uh, mm. They carried his casket. They were that good of friends with him. There were others, you know, people he knew from Tombstone, the mayor of Tombstone back in those days, another one of his pallbearers. Terry Oakley. Um, yeah. Now, his uh, headstone was actually stolen several times. <laughs> so there was actually a new one. The one you see now um, was actually erected in the 1990s. And it's in the, actually, the Marcus family plot, the Josephine Marcus family plot mm -hmm. in 
Hills of Eternity Memorial Park, which is a Jewish uh, cemetery in Colma, California, because Josephine was Jewish. Some say that Wyatt converted to Judaism uh, before he passed. So uh, he must have not had any tattoos. Unlikely. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> unlikely. Really so serious, but so that's you say yeah. urinary tr tract infection. I say botched circumcision. <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> I doubt yeah, it. That's a good but... point. It's like, is it yeah. supposed to bleed this much? Late, yeah, late <laughs> in life, Briss, and not a, not a great idea. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Boy, he, well, he did it himself, and uh, based purely on things he had heard. So, yeah. who knows yeah. what he did down there? He did it with a book knife. <laughs> he had his own but decapitation he, he did it yeah. with the hell bitch that was left out given to right. him by Doc Holliday yeah, yeah. there you go <laughs> but after he died Stuart Lake was not done with his book uh, so now he could write whatever he wanted to write so he wrote like this crazy story about Wyatt Earp that was mainly a bunch of bullshit but mm -hmm. it was a huge bestseller and everybody knew Wyatt Earp now Mm -hmm. because of this book, you know. And there's been movie after movie, I think over 40 movies made of, of Wyatt Earp, television shows, radio shows, all this stuff, you know. Bat Masterson, who kind of caused it, is is sort of forgotten now. That's know? funny. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, Wyatt stands just, as this pillar, you know. I just want to get my hands on, you know, during peak Earp fever, uh, the Wyatt Earp, you know, gummy vitamins, mm -hmm. and then also <laughs> the wider breakfast cereal. It is partially smoked cigars mm -hmm. and um, trail gravel, but um, it's part of a complete breakfast. We also have the wider, <laughs> uh, you know, limited toys series at McDonald's. Right. I know. If you're a boy, Barbies if you're a girl. <laughs> but <laughs> come on, at least we still have Tombstone Pizza. Yeah. Right. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. If he, Probably because of that. If he left a legacy, it's because of Tombstone Pizza. Who knows if it is? Uh, oh. I don't I would, I'm I would leaving hope. a legacy after I eat a Tombstone. <laughs> 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 I get it. But yeah, uh, why it's gone through ebbs and flows in our in our country's consciousness, whether or not we like him, we don't like him. You know, why lived his life without ever thinking that people were going to do this to him. You know, like, pick his life apart, you know. He wasn't perfect. Uh, like, I, I love what Bob Bozbell says about it. He goes, well, was Wyatt Earp a jerk? Yeah. But then I'm a jerk, and you're a jerk. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You're all a bunch of jerks. Yeah. Eh, nobody's perfect. Mm. Yeah. I just think, like, the myth of the Wild West sort of embodies, like, Wyatt Earp now, you know, like... The only guy that can stop a bad guy with a gun is another bad guy with a gun. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's the that's the Wild West, and he didn't clean up any of these towns, as you've seen. Like it, it's not like he cleaned up these towns and then that was over. You know, mm -hmm. right. law and order was restored to the West. Like Dodge City still had trouble. Tombstone still had trouble after this. You know what I mean? It's just it it becomes more complex when. You actually see what happened yeah. in the man's life, you know. Seriously. That is the end of oh. Wyatt Earp's Wild West. Well, there you go. Holy shit. That is the finale. It's crazy to, to finally have this series right off into the sunset. Oh. Indeed. Order. Indeed. The series itself is going out west. Yes. Yeah. To the uh, the Island of Heroes. <laughs> with Frodo yeah. and Spider-Man and... Um, Scotty Pippen. And Scotty Pippen. <laughs> Scotty Pippen. <laughs> With the Pet yeah. Boys doing the soundtrack the entire time. Yeah. yeah. Frodus, Gangdorf, uh, Gangdorf, Dumbledore's. Uh, Dumbledore's. <laughs> Tom Waits Dumb is there. Tom Waits is there. Yeah. Uh, the That's why the, the Pet there. Shop Boys doing their song because he's on the boat to the, the Isle of Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. all I got. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. okay. uh, about skeletons. Um, their <laughs> lifestyle, what they like to do, and their time off, I think. I wasn't listening. But anyway, uh, I am a boy. And you know what, gang? I'm living that, that skeleton life. Nice. Get ready for when we do live shows. Chris is going to have his own merch booth set up, and it's all going to be living that skeleton lifestyle, like beanies, hoodies, mm, yeah. T-shirts. He's going to be wearing yeah. a full ensemble. 
And yeah. it's going to be like living that skeleton lifestyle featuring the History Boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to have one of those, like, like Misfits shirts, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, where it's like the, the rib cage. Club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am Tyler Armentrout, and um, I'm not living that skeleton lifestyle, at least uh, <laughs> not currently. Um, not it's yet. It's something I've been looking into, and, um, you know, yeah. um, I've, Chris has given me a lot of pamphlets on it, and um, <laughs> he's selling me pretty hard on it. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'll, have you, I'll, I'll have an answer, uh, See, you know, on Friday uh, for payday. What I need, so. what, what you got to do is... <laughs> I mean, you, you you sell the you sell the skeleton lifestyle to other people, and you get them to sell it for you. And the more people who sell skeleton lifestyle uh, pamphlets uh, under you, the more money you make. Oh, it's like a funnel. Is there any other? Yeah, yeah. it's like a funnel. Yeah. Yeah. Funnels like all the funnel. money into my pockets, and then I yeah. skip town. <laughs> <laughs> One of those build a sure monorail. <laughs> there you go. Sure thing, skeleton men. Yeah, yeah. I sure I thing. am. Uh, uh, silent darts, deadly farts, Zach Mech. Uh, I am a history boy, and this has been a pleasure hearing the story tonight. That's going to be the name of your uh, your first R and B album. No, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> uh, chapter one. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I am Jerry Nash, your humble history boy. As always, thank you so much for listening and letting me indulge in telling one of my personal favorite stories we made it we're out done that's it <laughs> now we can continue don't forget to follow us on facebook twitter our discord is available for our patreon subscribers whom we love to the nth degree they keep this show going and i believe we have another patreon subscriber yeah we do am i right Hell yeah, we do. All Enjoy right. The family. Um, so we want to welcome, according to their Discord name, become Numa. Yeah. Become, become Numa. Numa. Uh, Yay! <laughs> ding 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 ding. Get him up, baby. Kick him up. Numa, yeah. Is that a Numa? Numa, is that yeah. A, Arthur Schopenhauer reference? I wonder if that's an what Arthur I just Schopenhauer. Said? Fuck, I don't know. No, Numa. Become oh. Numa. I think I that's an a Arthur Schopenhauer Schop- reference. I think that's an Arthur Schopenhauer reference, yeah. if, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, welcome to the fold. Tell me if that is. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Love to have you. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. Mr. Zach? Love you, bye. This is Jerry on the